The P-chart is a control chart for the proportion of defective units. In this lesson, we calculate the control limits using the normal distribution. And hello again to this lesson, which essentially has two learning objectives. At the end, you should be able to calculate the control limits using the normal distribution. And you should be able to implement this knowledge in a control chart and interpret it. This lesson is divided into two chapters. In the first chapter, we will use the normal distribution to calculate the control limits for a non-interference probability of 99.73%. And in the second, enter this limit in the control chart and discuss how it is to be interpreted. This picture shows the relationship between the various characteristics and the control charts used. The different characteristics are shown on the left and the different control charts on the right. The quantitative characteristics shown on the left can be divided into two different categories. First, the variable characteristics. These are all characteristics that can be measured. They always have a value and a unit. Examples of this would be the length, hardness, weight, surface roughness or tensile strength of a component. But we don't want to go into detail about them here. Second, there are the attributive characteristics. Those are all characteristics that can only be counted. On the right side, we have the different control charts for attributive characteristics with a white background. As you can see, there are six control charts for attributive characteristics. As already mentioned, this is about the p-chart for the proportion of defective units. Let's start with the calculation of the control limits using the normal distribution. The diameter of this piston serves as our example. Although it is a variable characteristic, it can also be checked attributively. For example, with the limit snap gauge. The test result is therefore only a statement as to whether the diameter is within the tolerance or not. So just a statement of pass or fail, or accepted or rejected. The results of the tests are shown in the table on the right. A sample size of 500 parts was tested each day. This was done for 45 consecutive days. Xi is the number of defective parts found in each sample. To calculate the control limits, we need the formulas shown on the left for the upper and lower control limits. Let's start with the formula below. It is used to calculate the proportion of defective units P in a sample. Xi is the number of defective parts in a sample and n is the sample size. In the formulas for the control limits, p bar is the mean value of the individual proportions of non-conforming units pi in a sample. n bar is the mean of the sample sizes. Since n is 500 and is the same for all samples, n bar is also 500. As already mentioned, the LCL and UCL are the lower and upper control limits for the fractions of non-conforming units. U for 1 minus alpha half is the quantile of the standard normal distribution. Since this training is aimed at advanced users, it is assumed at this point that you have the basic knowledge of the standard normal distribution and what is meant by the quantiles and how they are calculated. If not, you may want to check out the available lessons for this first. The proportion of defective units is calculated from the quotient of the number of defective units and the sample size. This value was calculated for each sample and entered in the PI column in the table on the right. 
the average proportion of defective parts is required for the further calculation of the control limits. This is calculated from the sum of the individual proportions of each defective parts divided by the number of random samples. Thus, p bar is 0.0098. Translated, this means that approximately 1% of all parts in a sample do not meet the specifications. Next, we need the quantile u of the standard normal distribution for a non-interference probability of 99.73%. There are tables for these in relevant books or on the internet. A small excerpt from such a table is shown here on the right. If you want to know more about these tables or how you can calculate these quantiles yourself, you should take a look at the separate lessons on this topic. We chose a non-interference probability of 99.73%. This also corresponds to the range of plus minus three times the standard deviation, hence six sigma. In relation to the upper bell curve, this means that it can be expected that all values will be between the value x lower and x upper with a probability of 99.73%. For 99.73%, the quantile u is 3. The value has already been inserted into the calculation in the middle. With p bar, the mean proportion of defective parts of 0.0098 and the mean sample size of 500, the upper control limit is 0.023. A value of minus 0.034 is calculated for the lower control limit. Due to the negative sign, the lower control limit does not apply. So, now that we have determined the upper control limit, we now come to the creation and interpretation of the p-chart. In the control chart on the right, the proportion of defective parts in the sample was entered on the y-axis. The x-axis is for the sample number. In our example, it is days because one sample was taken per day. The average proportion of non-conforming parts, p bar, was entered into the control chart as a kind of middle line of the value distribution and is at the known 0.0098. The upper control limit was drawn at the calculated 0.023. The red value curve shows the data on the basis of which we carried out our calculations. It is therefore to be expected that all values will be below the upper control limit with a probability of 99.73%. The probability that one of the values is above the control limit is less than 0.27%. If such a rare event occurs, it is an indication that the process is no longer under control. The cause must then be determined and the process readjusted if necessary. Well, that was a lot of new information. Therefore, I would like to conclude by repeating the three most important key messages. The control limits of the p-chart for proportion of non-conforming units are calculated using the normal distribution. The non-interference probability in the process is 99.73%, which is equal to a Six Sigma range. One or more values above the upper control limit is an indication of an out-of-control process, which may then have to be readjusted. If you found this lesson helpful, please let me know and leave a comment. Thank you for that, take care and see you next time. Bye!